Hey, this is Jody with another weekly video. We're going to get right into it. This week we're putting the hot pass on the 6G test. Last week's video, we did a root pass, showed a little bit about fitting up purge, some purge concepts, and the root pass using the dip keyhole technique. And I'll show you a little quick review of all that before we get into the hot pass. But even before we do all that, uh, because we're welding this thing with 309, this is a carbon steel pipe, but we're welding it with 309 stainless, and that's foreign to a lot of people. So let me explain a little bit about 309 rod. 309 is designed for dissimilar metals. It's, it's engineered to weld carbon steel to stainless steel, and there's a lot of variation there, a lot of different carbon steels to a lot of different stainless steels. It's also a really good maintenance rod. One good example of, of where this would come in handy would be this mold repair that I did. It had remnants of MIG weld left over. It wasn't penetrated very well, but it was machined. had to maintain a dimension. I could not grind the weld out. Didn't want to grind the weld out. And so this was a good application where I know that welding with 309 is going to take care of any porosity that would want to boil out otherwise. Now I knew the material type of these little machined pieces with the holes in them, but the other, the mold the mold material, it was, they were manufactured years ago by who knows who, so I just used 309, not wanting to buy trouble, and 309 rod usually will come out okay, and so I welded it using 309, and it did come out okay. And sometimes knowing that little tips like that can save you a whole lot of heartache. I mean, you can try to match material sometimes and get the exact right rod to match the composition of the base metal, and then you can sometimes get porosity and get all kinds of cracking and stuff going on because you didn't really guess the base metal correctly or you can just pick up some 309 and get her done and uh, you know everybody's happy so on this particular in this particular case I ran it was it was chamfered or beveled quite a bit so I ran two passes to make sure it had adequate weld metal in there unlike what you saw originally where it wasn't penetrated and then uh, and the parts were good or they're, they're being used right now another another uh, example would be this C-clamp. It's kind of a nice C-clamp that somebody just accidentally left clamped on material and almost saw it all the way through it on the bandsaw. So you would throw away a $50 or, or higher C-clamp or, or weld it up. Now I couldn't really identify the material type of the C-clamp. Didn't want to call the manufacturer and all that. I spark tested it. I did a little puddle on the edge and seeing if the metal would harden and then try to file it with a file and it didn't really seem to want to harden much so I figured well I know 309 is going to work and it did. That C-clamp is running right now and it's still clamping, still working and it's doing fine. Didn't give me any trouble at all. I, I did several passes on that to build up the thickness. Alright, back to the topic at hand. This is the hot pass on the 2 inch Schedule 80. It's also called a UA41 6G pipe test. We're using 309 stainless with purge and when you get done with the root pass you don't want to turn off the purge. Now I'll do a little review here. We started off getting tack welds on this thing at 70 to 80 amps. Just getting it to join. I'm using a 332nd, that's 2.4 millimeter 309 rod. Just using a dip keyhole technique and I got four tacks on it. Inspected them to make sure the purge was good. Uh, filed them and grind, ground them, you know, the feathered them. And then I did several dry runs like this. Several right hand as well as left hand to make sure I had the, the position at the right height where I could see everything on bottom and top. Another tip was that when I got up to the tacks I went ahead and ground them out and then keyhole right through them like this. That's coming up on that tack right there and then and then when I got to the tack added just a little bit less rod a little bit less frequently because I already left some material there. And then when I got on the top I motored out a little bit quicker and went just a little wider and added rod in there and just kind of you know you can go a little bit quicker on the top not worried about sinking through because gravity is going to pull it through. And then I'm, I'm finished with the root pass here and it puts a kind of a nice a little bit heavier root than some lay wire techniques and that's nice to keep from sucking back and also you can look on the bottom where I pushed a little more rod in it, it had the effect that I wanted to it actually is pushing through a little bit on the bottom and the purge is good. So coming on with the hot pass I, I had actually turned it up sometimes I don't turn it up for the hot pass in this particular case I turned it up to about 110 115 and I just got a puddle going and and, uh, and got moving now, there, there, there's kind of like two schools here you know of thought you can kind of use a low heat and go nice and slow and really try not to suck back or you can go a little bit hotter but just get get to moving quick and move on out and not spend much time across the middle but motor on out but if you turn it up kind of hot you better be able to motor on out and again you don't want to turn the purge off you want to keep your purge going and you want to have a purge vent so you don't build up pressure in the on the inside and, and uh, where if you do melt it'll it'll 
it'll poke it out it'll push it out it'll push it back with you and suck it back so you want to have an X cut in the tape on the top so to, to relieve the pressure one good idea is to just cut an X in the, in the tape that's on the top and then it'll make sure that it'll open up as needed but still keep a little bit of back pressure in there to keep it purged well on the inside you don't want to take all that care and make a good root only to screw it up on the hot pass and you need a good purge also just don't want any pressure so again coming up the left side here I'm trying not to spend much time across the middle just kind of zipping from side to side and making sure I take a good little step each time to kind of keep the travel speed going you know if you if you you can go across the middle as quick as you want but if you don't hardly progress forward any then you're just going to hang in one place too long and the heat's going to build up and you're going to have problems so it's all all relative you know it's it's not just amps but it's travel speed and how fast you go across the middle and how much filler rod you add that's about it for this week's video if you're training for a 6g it usually means that you're going to travel somewhere to go take it and you're going to have to fight the nerves and you're going to have to fight the heat and so i really hope that some of these tips help you and i sincerely believe that a TIG finger will give you a little edge on passing this thing. All right, we'll see you next week.